Welcome to the presentation of the um, about all bird from our in-house development to viewfind. I will talk about our journey from our own front and to viewfind. A journey is of course always planned, but it always holds surprises you can't plan. But this is indeed what is the charm of a trip, a journey, and we try to give time for this such surprises and plan for them. But before we start with the journey, let's take a look at the starting conditions for that trip. Let me begin with a few words about Orbit. Orbit is uh, the discovery system of KLBV, namely the Cooperative Library Network of Berlin Brandenburg. All university libraries or public libraries and many special libraries in Berlin and Brandenburg are united in it. Orbit has now uh, at the TUS Institute uh, been over the past 10 years. It's based on a concept of the library of uh, the German Research Center for Geosciences in Potsdam, which was also the first pilot development partner for Albert. Albert is a lean solution for all libraries that want to enable their users to search their collections quickly and effectively, and that not just in their local holdings. With Albert, also heterogeneous and uh, specialized data from different data sources can be searched and can also be pooled on a shared uh, search interface. So it's about integrating various contents from OPEX uh, subject and institutional repositories, uh, national licensed ebooks and articles, journal feeds and research data. Albert realizes individual search indices that are adapted to the requirements of the respective user and institution. Now let's take a look at a somewhat more technical version of that. Albert has a modularized backend for data administration. It's Java-based and a solar cloud as a search index. A front-end that had, to, that had so far been proprietary based on Java and uh, running on Tomcat. At the moment, we've got uh, 13 project partners. At the start of the project, there were four developers of us. Now we are five and one project manager. At the bottom, you see there's a backend where the data comes in into the solar cloud. They're ejected. And in the end, they're used by the Java front end. There's one specificity. We've got a solar proxy component, which we have developed. It allows us that other indices, for example, the Gemeinsame Verbünde Index, GVI, can also be integrated so that remote lending is also possible. All but has uh, two kinds of front ends. Firstly, it's topic based uh, front ends like the KOBV portal, which is a regional portal with uh, regional data from Berlin and Brandenburg being made available to the users for that. We have developed an own backend deduplication, which also merges records and does not use the solar grouping. However, with this uh, topic-based uh, search portals, we can only process um, Mark 21 data, which is a difference to institutional front ends. Here, we can also process other formats currently. And uh, our, the idea here is that multiple sources, which are relevant for an institution, can be displayed. So what are the features? The features of the Orbit front end, on the one hand, it is about having several search indices and uh, tabs with which the institutional data sources and uh, portal data sources can be displayed. Furthermore, an article index with data from Crossref can be integrated and the Gemeinsame Verbünde index data, the GVI index, that is a common platform probably of uh, networks. Furthermore, we have uh, own design with barrier-free components, uh, e.g. high contrast view. We were talking about a dark mode, so this is what this is getting at. Also, different uh, font sizes can be displayed. Furthermore, 
we have got the possibility of uh, mapping hierarchies so that the uh, you had the uh, overriding record and below the uh, children, so to speak. Then we have the possibility to integrate classifications, for example, the Regensburger Verbund classification, RVK, so that uh, the whole tree is uh, being shown and also availability. There's a special availability which uh, affords either real-time uh, availability via a script of uh, the small page. Uh, there are, of course, uh, these uh, libraries and also availability via the data themselves and availability, which is important, especially for the portals, via a availability database which holds all the availability data and is regularly updated. What, um, however, moves us forward on this journey to Wufine, uh, the users of the Orbit front and uh, the OPAC is uh, channeled to the library and in OPAC, the administrative processes and the login can be carried out to uh, order certain things. However, there was a rupture for the users who basically had completed a search in our portal and uh, now are forwarded to a second portal in order to uh, order the item. And here, the account functionality development of Albert starts. We call this project Albatico. It will provide Brandenburg's uh, university and college libraries, which it's the project is with these. So it provides the opportunity for attractive research and presentation environments, which can replace the traditional OPACs. The touch points of CSIS are expiring. So this is, uh, uh, that is the support is expiring. So they have to be replaced. So how do we implement that? So we had the chance to add the account functionality in our own front end. Well, what were the pros? It would enable us to, uh, to hold everything in a, a one-stop shop, develop it and tailor it according to our needs. Also, the current Java-based components uh, could be continued at the front end side. What makes it difficult, however, was that it's difficult to integrate it into the existing front end because of the structure of the front end. And the front end is in fact also uh, quite a bit outdated. So a new development is indeed necessary. In the long run, it would um, also involve high maintenance costs. So this is why we took a look at other front ends. Here's an overview. I won't talk about everything. It was in July 2019 when we did that. This is some time ago already. What is important for us is the solar um, middleware because we wanted to work with our own solar cloud and uh, also uh, the uh, library uh, system and templates and responsive design and the languages. So why has it become a VUFIND? On the one hand, a PHP is a program language that's widespread. Many developers are available. External support is available. Uh, it's a library system application, which is important for Albertico we, because we need the CSIS application in and it has an active and large community, which is also important in order to continue the project. Furthermore, there's a template engine which allows us uh, easier and more flexible designs to be developed for the various institutions. And additionally, it's also compliant with the general data protection regulation. Now, here's an overview of the modifications which were which are necessary for Albertico as we see it. On the one hand, the account functionality for CISIS. Furthermore, the connection to our own solar cloud with our own specific scheme, our own design, which has been verified and been around for quite a while. It's good. So we would like to uh, copy it and also the integration of the multiple search indices as tabs and also availability for CISIS. For the modification, that is for the account functionality for CISIS, 
the CISA systems are hosted by the Bavarian Library Network, and they made uh, uh, an interface available uh, to us via NSIP, which is also uh, integrated. So we had to adapt that a bit in order to add uh, more um, cells for the account view. This was a demand and also two libraries and uh, the fetching place uh, to be displayed for the user and make it selectable and also adjustments uh, for the preliminary comment and uh, for pre-ordering. However, we had uh, to um, had an extension of our database. Let's see how we handle that in future. So the modifications for the solar cloud here. We didn't put up a direct connection to the solar cloud because uh, WooFind can only indicate a, a specific uh, um, a front end, so we thought uh, about using our solar proxy. We had a solar cloud interfaces, so it works with the so keeper, so we can at first distribute uh, the load. And if uh, there is uh, one um, front end processor off, we can also have support. It also allows us to manipulate uh, questions and answers. In the viewfind, we have uh, developed a record driver for that, which uh, gets in terms with the own solar cloud scheme and also a record driver uh, for the uh, uh, shared library index. And also we added a few uh, uh, fields for processing. We uh, put that into viewfind subsequently for example, on the left hand side, concatenated. And uh, we also have the possibility that the support of hierarchies is now uh, available. Now, as I reported in 2022, we've got our own design. It's based on a CC, uh, on a CSS. It has been simplified on a bootstrap three basis. We have our main theme where we derive themes uh, for each instance and we have a high contrast mode for people with disabilities and a responsive web design. Now, this is what it looks like. On the left-hand side, you see the old front end of BTU Corpus and on the right-hand side, this is uh, the interface in ViewFind. Also with the home library selection possibilities at the login. All right. Now, what about availability for Zizis? Well, we could have done that via NSIP, but we thought that it's not quite as performant. And there were also wishes from the institutional partners to make it more flexible. So what we did is, that is with our project, we had an existing Perl script, which we developed further together with the other project partners. And this is hosted by the Bavarian Library Network. It enables direct queries uh, against the CISIS database so that we can there also have performant um, queries uh, regarding availability and more flexible logics can be built in and status uh, depending on your needs can be shown and also the color and the location. The whole thing has been included in WooFind as Ajax request. Now, there's one specificity. What we uh, have uh, also put forward is an infrastructure, another one uh, different from uh, WooFind. We delight on Kubernetes in order to be more flexible in development and deployment. We have several instances, so we wanted to simplify that. So we thought, let's go to the Kubernetes uh, infrastructure, which we have in our institute. It's made available to us. And we also have had to build a CI CD pipeline for that. We use GitLab for that. And in Kubernetes, uh, we can deploy from there. 
Now, we had some problems with the infrastructure. Well, on the one hand, we had to make sure we can create a CI-CD pipeline. The, a GitLab runner had to be produced, which can talk to uh, Kubernetes. Then several environment variables had to be created. Passwords, tokens uh, required special treatment. Also, external resources had to be uh, integrated, in, uh, including um, uh, PDFs uh, as content uh, list, the logging and monitoring. So it's a lot about log aggregation when there are several instances. That is, if you have, uh, if you want to have several containers run for one instance, and then monitoring with Prometheus and uh, displaying Grafana. So what does our front end look like now? We have several solar proxies running uh, on a redundancy basis and several who find front ends. And uh, the solar cloud uh, is connecting that. So we still use the solar proxy, but the other data are then to be run via the solar proxy. Now, what does the project timeline look like? We started out in the uh, first uh, quarter of 2021 with the requirement analysis for Albatico. We started uh, staging training together with EVB. And uh, in the second quarter, we started with migration to Wufine 71 with the Technical University of Wildau. And that is an external partner with the EDW. And in the third quarter, we then started uh, with developing the account functionality for Wufind. And uh, the migration of uh, the uh, Cottbus, Potsdam, uh, uh, and the uh, uh, Adrena universities were partners. In the fourth quarter, we started locally to set up a development environment based on CICD, based uh, and implemented on Docker and GitLab, a prototype development environment. In the second quarter of 2022, a Kubernetes training uh, was staged internally because we have to implement that ourselves and didn't have any additional assistance. Furthermore, we had a project a completion with EWW and they took over the project and uh, did further developments of the instances and until their features and wishes had been included. Then there was a big gap in the second quarter of 2023 own, we only started with migration of uh, Kubernetes in our Kubernetes cluster with external support and created a productive environment, a live environment, in order to be able to release our uh, instances. And in Q4 2023, we did the first release uh, with the Wildau University and the following quarters, there were also releases. And at the end of the year, with the, we plan with the German Cancer Research Center and with SIP to have another release. Now, what would we do differently if we were to start again with this knowledge? We would definitely plan for much more time for migrating the front ends. And maybe we would as well dispense with the uh, same uh, Step, namely to switch to Kubernetes. Uh, this costs a lot of time. This can be easily underestimated. So what's the outlook? We will soon update to Wufine 10.1 and the design to be migrated to Bootstrap 5. Also, there will be a migration of our portal front ends and our solar scheme uh, is slowly to be moved towards the Find standard scheme. So I would like to thank you for your attention. And I'm now uh, expecting your questions, maybe also to um, give you some experience with Kubernetes. Thank you very much.